a lot of uh, a lot of awesome Anishinaabemowin classes happening lately. Spectacular, exciting times. Um, I'm sure some of you have picked up some new words along the way. If you could please take a, a moment maybe to uh, dig up a new word that you have found, uh, write it down. And if you want to share it, um, I would love to hear it uh, in just a moment. I think there's a, a raise hand option too that we can use. We want to take turns. Yeah, I think it might be under the chat button to Kevin, can you see better from your perspective on where the, the raise hand option is? Yeah, so if, you click, if you click on uh, participants. Uh, right. Yeah, click on participants and you should see it there. Me, yeah, shimmy gwetch. Okay, so let's listen to some Shke Kidwinan. I already see some in the chat. Awesome. Jimmy Gwedge. Good dog kitten now where Kevin. so that was one that uh Sandra Pelche said today during one of our things said Mila Ak Zibin Bindege Bindege Bideg Ban Mampi Weekwam Kong. So it was a cool sentence she used to say, you know, that sickness could come into our community. She used je bin de gay bidegibun to emphasize that could, like not uncertainty, which is a use of that bun. So bin de gay bide, it enters, it inanimate thingy enters. Yeah. Miwe akuzewen je bin de gay bidegibun. Awesome. Jimmy Gwetch. And Nora, would you care to unmute yourself and share your kidwin, your word? Um, I think we have a different dialect a little bit with the K's. We don't use the K's, we use the G's. So it's a little bit different than what you guys have. <clears throat> we learned how to say cover your mouth when you sneeze when you cough. So uh, it's probably saying it right. Badagwa ana, badagwa na an, gadun, cover your mouth. Ozo sadaman, ozo sadaman. When you cough, da cha moyan. When you sneeze, is that right? Not tell good. Awesome, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Thanks for writing it. <laughs> Thank you. Be in. Hey, when ash gaobe. If you want to use that raise hand, I can. If I can catch it. I wonder where it'll appear. If anybody has a shke kid when.
So I didn't see a little blue hand icon on anybody's names. Nobody learned any kid with none. <laughs> I've seen that either. Where's the raise your hand thing? Um, in the participant list, there should be three options, I believe. Okay, Chickadee, can you unmute yourself and say that nice and loud and proud? <laughs> no. Wonky is it. She is confident. Also, chat is under those three dots. Yeah, miigwech. Melissa, I see a little blue ninja. It's ever awesome. Jean, come. Hi there. <laughs> Mine's simple, just from the other day. I couldn't come last week, but the week before was just uh, meh. Basically, I always thought it was my like my mama's not with us anymore so I always thought that when she said that to me she meant like come with me because I always follow her so now I mean she meant hurry up <laughs> so now that she's gone I understand that <laughs> she's probably thinking what is this kid doing <laughs> oh, awesome thank you for sharing thank you thank you All right, so I have one for you. Ngi nbe da bonik. Ngi nbe da bonik. We'll type it here. That means I fell asleep in the car. And Naomi, Mia. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up. Tuesday's class was was uh, fascinating. Gimen when doglish, da ha. Miigwech of Upshkamangan. Ga kinomage in. Yeah. Good time, Kamik. So if you missed uh, Tuesday's class with Upshkamangan, uh, Please check out the YouTube channel. It's uh, it's pretty neat, and I know that um, TPR and um, doing the actions with Kidwinan really helps with uh, some people, especially young learners, and it gets them moving. So chimigwech for that. Uh, also, kche en kamagak nangwa omigwech Kevin. Holy, that was fast. <laughs> um, Kevin put the link there in the chat, I believe. Um, Nangwa, we uh, tried to meet in uh, Isidore's class just to say a chimigwech, and we tried to round up uh, 300 people. We made it to 230. I thought that was pretty awesome. And I wasn't there for the first part, but my friend uh, Giwi Namak told me, oh, when. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when there was 200, he said something like, uh, there you are, where have you all been? <laughs> that was pretty cute. <laughs> yeah, so miigwech bishayek minwa, thanks for coming again. So I'm going to try a, a little bit of a game with you. Um, it's not going to go as awesome as I thought it would because of the whole um, reverse reverse of the camera. So, Ben Kanik, raise your hand. Gish Ben, you've heard of heads up, Jinkadik. I can change that in my settings. Mina. <laughs> Okay, awesome. I saw a ninja. What <laughs> Tonkamik. 
Opish attack do settings. Click, click, click. Um, mirror? Yeah. Oh, and I can't even touch up my appearance. Uh -huh. <laughs> non Ben, I see that now. Oh, look, I'm all smooth. <laughs> the ton connect. All right, so I hope this works. I do this with my students, and you can do that with your families or kids, y'all. Becca, Kevin accidentally escaped. <laughs> there he is. You can do these with your uh, students. Or as uh, if you're learning with your family at home, what I did was uh, it, it is it is inspired by Heads Up, and when I was going over some base vocabulary with my students, um, it wasn't fun for them just to sit there and go over flashcards after a while. So uh, we had to do a little bit of that just so they, they can gain the meaning. But in order for them to practice, we did things like Pictionary, where I would tell them one of the words and then have to draw it. And then uh, the teams would have to uh, say what the word is in Anishinaabem one in order to get the point. But I was lucky enough that every student on both teams could have a dry erase board. That's really handy instead of um, kids waiting for their turn to draw because idle hands, you know. Ooh. So I wanted to try something because I noticed that I can view different webcams all at once, which is cool. I'm going to show you a little bit what I did with my students. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> oh, he's asking me to make him co-host again. Now, how does I'm going to hold up a picture. This is what I do with my students. And for my older students who really grasp vocabulary well, I go through it really fast. And we try to beat each other's times of who can go through the vocabulary. So the person would be like in a hot seat and I would stand behind the student and I would hold up the card for them. And then all the class would act it out, whatever that verb is. So I'd have the word there and the definition. And the person in the hot seat would have to try to guess really fast. It, uh, they really like that one. So I'm gonna try it today. Oh, <laughs> but I can see my own webcam, hold on. <laughs> I'm going to hold up a word and I encourage uh, all of you to try to act it out. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> Bear with me. And I'll try to guess which word it is. And they're words that we've been uh, using in the slides. So hopefully you can see this. Keat, can you see that? Awesome. Oh, Nondua. To hear someone, Nondua. Good time coming. Miigwech. And I wasn't even peeking at my camera. <laughs> Ever good me. Now, what's the next one? <laughs> Keep going. This one's amusing. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Ottawa, Ottawa to get a ride with somebody. Okay, miigwech, Kevin. Uh, I can't see my screen. Shin, Wabma, Wabma to see someone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, funny. Okay. Oh, it took me a second. Me, no. <laughs> I was like, shush. What did I write? Write me, Gwetch. Hmm. 
<lacht> genau nach. Genau nach. Ne Schengua. Statt da. Oh, das war nicht genau nach. <lacht> Was war denn da? Wow, okay. One point for you guys. <lacht> so, uh, <lacht> what looks like more than one point actually. That's kind of um, what I do with the students. Um, makes it a little bit interesting learning the vocabulary. Unfortunately, you do have to go over some vocab sometimes, and then you can build upon it, which is what we've been doing. Okay. Yeah, so, Nijwaswe uh, and Saganagazit, it's the seventh. Nijwaswe and Saganagazit. Nemebenegizis. Nemebenegizis. Becca, I'll check the weather. Gin gi guanquit. It was cloudy. Oh, non in non in pitate. I mean, this could be incorrect. I'm just using the word I learned at Eskinishna Bemjik. Immersion camp, we did this. It might refer only to terms of uh like heat when it's uh, warm. <clears throat> and uh, when you look at weather apps, it'll say uh, feels like, feels like. So I thought, hmm. So Gikwej Ma, Manyan, and Anawas. And uh, the kid win she gave me was Giamagat. Giamagat feels like. And here on my weather app, it says zero degrees. Guy Gagel. Feels like nothing. Oh, me watch Senna. Sta ta ha. 17. Pitate. Oh, one. Oh, Nasap. Oh, Gagete. Oh, Gizok Bode. Apish Eja in. No, Eja in. ZB square. Mm hmm. Staha. Gawin Gizok was no mumpy, chigging. Yeah, and a shin twenty three pita tesh da ha. Gijate Nishin Sena Wabong Nish de Nasha Niwin da pita te. It's going to be twenty four degrees tomorrow. Nishin me gwedge. Yeah, get ten. Nasap mumpig in a bunch, ZB square. Now, how? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> polar vortex. <laughs> Anisha, Ejekidian, polar vortex. Oh, bah. Bangi, komi bi sa oma. Jibigadek. Miigwech sana. That means there was a little bit of uh, ice pellets over there. <clears throat> That be saw refers to that precipitation. Maja be saw, starting to rain. Komi be saw, freezing rain. Anishkeyabe. Reminds me of Forrest Gump. Big fat rain, sideways rain. <laughs> now, how? So we reviewed some of the verbs. We're going to do a little bit of an intro to uh, obviation. Awesome. <clears throat> Feel free to chat. I don't mind seeing that Nishnabe Moin. Lesson goals. I will become aware of obviation in Anishinaabemowin. I will know how to add an obviative suffix to names slash nouns. So <clears throat> that I didn't put any more goals there because obviation is a really um, tricky subject, even for myself. It takes practice and None of us are going to master it in an evening unless, I don't know, you're lucky. So this is a recap of what we did. We did uh, me to her, non doa, me na, wabma, kwetwa, <clears throat> and we did she to me. She to you, plus we did approximately 13 verbs. Those are our action words. Here are, here they are. Just gonna minimize something, there we go. Okay, so we uh, used genona to call someone. And we learned to put it into the the other form. Giganonik, uh, he called me. Kiganonik, he called you. Quedjma, to ask someone. Giquedjmik, he asked me. Kiquedjmik, he asked you. Mina, to give to someone, to give something to someone. Giminik, she gave it to me. Kiminik, he gave it to you. Known the wa, here's someone. Gi non the mock, ki non the mock. Na the moa, help someone. Gi na the mock. Ki na the mock, he helped you. Kinomoa, to teach someone. Gi kinomok, ki kinomok. I'm just saying the key to kind of emphasize. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the other person instead of just saying gee because it, it just sounds a little bit too similar especially probably over webcam again those are the the she to me and she to you or he to me he to you and uh i'm not i don't mean to um explicitly say she to me or he to you and involve those gender specific roles. This is just a means of showing the pattern and being consistent. Um, cool thing about Anishinaabemowin is there is really no he or she gender designation in the language. I love that. He did what to whom? So obviation is important to recognize because it tells us who is doing what. If there's uh, two people that you're talking about in a sentence, <clears throat> it's, uh, 
It is expressed using suffixes. Suffixes go at the end of the word. Suffixes are added to some names and to verbs. Names can appear in any part of the sentence. The word order doesn't matter. It involves third person and fourth person. It is not needed for inanimate nouns. So for example, uh, if you're talking about an object, um, you don't need to change anything there. <clears throat> so here I have how to add suffixes to names. I'm not sure if the if it's too small, but the first one I have Mary. Mary in. Oh, Nieben School. That's a fake name for a school. Nieben School, Zagon, Marion. So uh, if you have a school name, this would be a really nice idea. Um, if you, I know at Lakeview School, there was a bulletin board created and it had all the names of the students and it said Lakeview School, Zagon, and they obviated every single student's names. I just, I thought that was pretty amazing. Alex Sun, Alex Sun, Nieben School, Zagon, Alex Sun, Chris Sun, Nieben School, Zagon, Alex Sun, oh, sorry, Chris Sun, bah, <laughs> typos, I love them. Mike Gun, Mike One, Mike One, Nieben School, Zagon, Mike One. Gyalbe. Some more. I noticed a pattern. And what I noticed was now the reason why I put a question mark in the left uh, column is because it's just a guess for me. Like I said, uh, it's, it's a little bit tricky to learn. So these are the three types of suffixes. I've noticed uh, in, un, and one. So for names that almost had like a, a long vowel sound, uh, Julian, Pauline, Terryin, Sarahin, and then for names that ended in a, a consonant sound, uh, L R S, Chris Un, Francis Un, Bill Un. Peter on. And then for the last one, squatch, um, ends with a K sound, a K, K. So Rick, Rick Quan, Frank Quan, Hank Quan, Mike Quan. Even though there's an E at the end of Mike, it still has that K sound. So we don't want to um, get hung up on how it's written in English. Just go by the sound of the name to help you select uh, which suffix you feel sounds better. Um, this, is, this is just going to take some practice, but I think speakers will understand you um, if you just add any in any of these ends at the end of the names while you're trying to practice, it'll be good.
So here's where I'm going to ask you to take a moment if you have a Jabiganatic, meanwhile, Mizinigan, a pen and a piece of paper. Take a minute, write some of these names down and try to figure out how you would add the obviative suffix to them. I will give you probably about, uh, let's try four minutes. Funny. So uh, what we're doing is we're trying to figure out what kind of suffixes we might add to the end of these names. So in just a few minutes, I'll be asking um, for everyone to type their answers in the chat. We'll check it out and then we'll check our responses. I can already see I did mine all different than uh, Kevin, but that's all right. <laughs> the point is we're trying. Oh, speaking of trying, I think this is our fourth session, our fourth week. Congratulations. Make watch for the eco-friendly confetti, Kevin. Looks good, Naomi. What Tonkamik. Yep, so we can begin sharing our answers, typing them in. I'll scroll. All right, so I'm gonna to go to the next slide. You can continue adding to the chat or just check your answers on your sheet. That's okay too. Miigwech, Sana. Well, <laughs> here we go. Bah. So there are some variations. I'm not saying that my answers are completely correct. 
Kevin had uh, different ways of obviating as well. The point is we're trying, we're getting a hold of the concept. I actually think I made a, yeah, typo on Sue. And I just noticed that because of ZB Square, miigwech for sharing. So Sue would have been more of the in sound at the end. Wow. Kevin. Can you uh, unmute yourself and uh, discuss about uh, why you chose to obviate in uh, in the way that you did? Totally, for sure. Is. Um, okay, so obviation on English names can be tricky, but there's not really like a set rule for them. So all of these work fine with any English name. For Ojibwe names and the Shinabe names, um, there is more of like a concrete rule for them, uh, excluding conjuncts. So, for example, somebody's name is Badwewudung, right? His name is technically a participle or a conjunct of a verb. So to obviate it, you don't change the name itself. You can't change it, right? So you to obviate it, you put one of these on there. So you would say, Migizi Ogikanunan Inyo Badwe Wudungan. So it would sound, you just put an un in the end of that. So conjuncts aren't particularly easy either. So my choice is for the, for the three though. So for Misquanaqued um, and Miguanabikwe, Nibinkwe, Ojig, those are all Anishinaabe names, very easy to know the obviation because uh, if you know if you know anything about uh, the plurals of those words or um, sorry how do I explain that if you know the plurals of some of these words like misquanaqued misquanaquedun right you know that there's an o actually hidden behind that d so it would make more sense for the it, the n is the obviation right in the end is getting attached to the back of it. So the O comes up again and becomes Misquanaquadun or Misquanaquadon, however you pronounce it. Same thing with um, Anishinaabekwe, right? It's uh, not, they don't say Anishinaabekwewug, right? That's grammatically not correct. It would be Anishinaabekweg. So same thing as well when you obviate it, you don't say, Migizi Ogi Gakanunan Inu Anishinaabe Kwe one, it's Anishinaabe Quen, right? So knowing the Kwe attached to the attached to nouns like that, so uh, for example, Miguanabi Kwe or Nibin Kwe or Anishinaabe Kwe, it's just an N that gets attached to the Kwe itself, not Kwe one. Um, however, if you go to say, if you go to obviate Kwe itself, it's Kwe one or kwe wug, right? It's just the G that turns into an N. Um, yeah, so again, the plural of ojig is ojigug, right? And it's just changing the G to an N. So ojigun is uh, the more, yeah, so knowing um, obligation on Anishinaabe names is far easier than English names. Uh, 
but all of these are 100% correct for English names. Like you can just, whatever, whatever works, whatever gets the point of obviation to the speaker is gonna work. That's my reasoning of why I chose that. Hope that made any kind of sense. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Geek, Chimenches, Nina. I was, um, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, because the same thing happens when uh, if someone's um, cleaning potatoes, like Gushet, uh, Be Non, Pinin. Yeah, exactly. Nailed yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with like, um, like nobody says Anishinaabe Wug, right? It's Anishinaabe. So you obviate Anishinaabe, Anishinaabe, right? Same thing like that, yeah. Yeah, so if you're talking about um, something animate, all you have to do is look at its plural form and then plural form, and then you'll see that it'll end in an uk, and, and you just change that to an n at the end. Like a pinik would be pinin, skolmanuk, that would be an n. And so on. Me watch Kevin. So this is from that the Bajmoas that I showed you. Here we have example of obviation. Gimozab man nigik one gigo kenit. Nigik guaweb nan gigo yin. Oh, see, there we go. Gigo yin. That would have been, uh, that's gigo yik is the plural. You just change that G or a K to an N. Wow. Here we go. All right. So, persons in a sentence. So we have uh, all kinds of people. We have first person, me or I. The second person is you. The third person is she or he or Fourth person, I was like, am I explaining this properly? Should it also be she or he? So obviation involves more than one person or one uh, more than one animate noun. Linguists refer to them as actors and goals, I think, for lack of a better word. Actors and goal. So here we have uh, the actor is verbing the goal. Uh, if there's a fourth person, both the person and noun and verb need a suffix. Who is more important? So Anishinaabemowin has a way of classifying uh, actors and uh, people in in a sentence. So I've learned that the third person is more important than the fourth person. So what that just means is that less emphasis is put on the fourth person uh, because we're really talking about what the third person is doing. That's what our emphasis is, is on. So for example, Kevin Nadumawan Nibinan. So Kevin is helping Niban. And I'm just I'm just um kind of background information. They don't really care about like what I'm up to. Uh, the person talking is only caring what Kevin is up to. He's the third person, the actor. Kevin Nadumawan Nibinan. Monty Gikwejmon Kevinan. Monty Gikwejmon Kevinan. So Monty asked Kevin. 
So how did this come to be that Kevin is helping Neben? Well, Monty Gikwej Mon Kevinan. I'm just going to leave that up for a second because uh, it's a bit of a bit of a lot to take in. I know it is for, for me. I had to do a lot of rereading. So the third person ranks higher than the fourth person. So we learned some awe and ick and awk previously. Here we have <laughs> a little disclaimer. So like I said, um, I am still learning about obviation as well, but I figured this is very important to at least kind of listen for and look out for. Uh, I'm not an expert in the grammatical terms, but I just, it was really important for me to share with you the little bit that I was able to look into. So on the left side, we have Kevin Nodomoan Nibinen. Kevin Nodomoan Nibinen. Kevin is helping Nibin. I'm the fourth person, as mentioned in the last slide. And then on the right column, and I, I honestly have very little clue as to why the <laughs> there's a change. Um, I've been told that it depends on how someone is telling a story, um, where they want to put most of their emphasis on uh, when they're talking about people uh, in a story or if they're talking about something that's happening, that's when this other form comes into play. And I'm hoping that someone can explain it really well to me so that I, I really, really get it. I really catch it. Maybe there'll be some awesome fluent speakers watching this video later. <laughs> and then they'll slide into my DMs and explain it. Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, awkward. <laughs> so, the next change is when the fourth person is verbing the third person. So, Monty in Gi Quedjamegon Kevin. So, if you remember, the previous class we, uh, was Quedjamek. So, here it's quejimagon that ik changes to a gon. Montian gi quejimagon Kevin. Kevin was asked by Monty. So right now we have two ways of obviating, and it just depends. I think I have a good example of when this comes into play. Awesome. Let's hear it. So, oftentimes, I mean, like, everything you said was um, right. It's, uh, you know, where the attention, where the, uh, the person that the speaker wants to put the attention on, right? Like, Miigunami Koi often describes it as, like, you're telling a story and you have a flashlight on somebody, right? And you want everybody to see the person who you're emphasizing. So, you shine the flashlight on that person. But the example I want to give is um, oftentimes when you're telling a story, you want to say like, oh, uh, his mother or his relative, her relative, then verbed him. So you can't say, you know, uh, os, uh, os or osan or ogashiman, ogika kwejiman, Brandon. Like that grammatically doesn't make any sense, right? Because you're to say his father, right? O son is uh, fourth person, right? O son is fourth person, and you need a way to for that fourth person to verb the third person without making 
oh son the third person <laughs> wait this is very convoluted i'm sorry um anytime basically you want to use a dependent noun so my father your father his father uh, you need to use this igun that's when this igun comes into play so example sentence um oh son ogik kweji megun brandon so brandon's father asked him right you can't say his father asked him using ogik kwejiman it just doesn't work it just doesn't there's no way around that. unless you say like Wien Wienie John said Brandon on Ogika Kwejuan, but it's like oftentimes the speaker is gonna respond best with what's easiest said. Like us learners often convolute things like I just did. So you wanna go with the easiest thing. O son, Ogashiman, Okumis son, Ogika Kwejimigun, Janada Magud, right? So um, his grandmother asked him to help to help him, for her to help him, right? So Anytime you use a dependent noun um, is when these are very, yeah, I'll type some examples. So, show me son, or call me son, like he could me goon, Brandon. All right, so Brandon's grandmother, right? And you know it's obviated fourth person because of the un, right? Okamis son, his grandmother, Ogika Kwejimegun, Brandon. Brandon's the third person. And uh, yeah, Ogika Kwejimegun. Isn't him or her is said or implied to him by her, etc. Isn't him or her is said. Uh, I'm not sure what that means, sorry. <laughs> I think maybe they they mean um oh use him or her um because there can be more than one animate uh person in a sentence it's important to tack on these suffix suffixes so you know that who is doing what to whom so can you provide maybe an example where that would be important to know um like uh if you write it this way this is what it means and if you write it this way and this is what it means mm. sort of like a compare and contrast mm -hmm. mm. Mm. I, I'll, I'll think about that. But another example too that I was thinking is that um, like if you're telling a story and you have your main character and you have an additional character for like a brief second, you don't always want to switch that person to be the third person. They're still a secondary character and in the place, in their place of being fourth person. But you have like your main character and his brothers, for example. Well, then you would say like, oh, this person verbed these guys and you still have maybe his grandmother who's only in the story for a single sentence as your fourth person. So same thing like, oh, ogi wido ka gawan. And you know, um, yeah. So I think the linguistic explanation is that the normal situation is that third person verbs the fourth person. So if the other way around, you have to mark the sentence as going into an expected direction. Yeah. Well, here I thought they were asking, like if I would have just put Kevin, not a Moan, Nibin, you wouldn't know who was helping who in oh, that yeah. sentence? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so in Ojibwe, you definitely need alviation, right? Because if you're like, um, Brandon, Ogi Moan, Bakwejigan, like if you if you said that a speaker doesn't know if the bread ate Brandon or if Brandon ate the bread, like so in Ojibwe you have to specify who's eating the bread, right? Yeah, me, yeah, me, which? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, bread's animate, right? So it has to be Bakwejiganan um, or Brandon, right? Brandon ate the bread. Yeah, Bakwejiganan. Yeah. 
Excellent example. Yeah, but I, I very much, um, yeah, so if you're going to use these igoons, a good place to practice with them first is with dependent nouns, which are, you know, uh, my, my animate thing, or sorry, my, um, yeah, so my animate dependent thing. So, you know, uh, whatever, my grandmother, my dog, my this, that, and the other. Yeah, or his grandmother, his dog. Yeah. Ogi Migi Migun Odayan. His dog barked at him. Yeah. He's still the main character. His dog is a secondary character. Or fourth character. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know what else I can add to that. <laughs> Hope that no, too that convoluted. Was, that was awesome. <laughs> ah. They get to uh, how back on. Miigwech. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay. So, just like last time, um, could you attempt translating these um, on your own on uh, using some Mizinigan and the Zhibiganatik? And then in a few minutes, we'll uh, take a look at some of the answers. And if I made an error anywhere, please let me know. So all I'm looking for is just taking one of them, such as uh, Montian, Gigano, Non Nibin. What do you think that means based on what we've been learning so far? Oh, I see, Kevin. So <laughs> I got all excited, having fun obviating. <laughs> so, uh, okay, here's what we're gonna do. Nondwa has both names obviated. Let's uh, let's take out the in in Amy. So it'll just be Amy, not obviated. Oh. And me na me watch good eye you guys take out the un in Maryland oh. ah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops <laughs> Oh no Anishkana Aha Kanjira Okay, so I'm just going to fix that because it, it bugs me. Miigwech.
All right, if you got some answers here, you want to share it in the chat. You are more than welcome to. Miigwech Sana. Now how miigwech Gibajai and Melissa Bama P women eh Shin, miigwech. Miigwech, you all just did my homework. <laughs> Nisha the <de> kid. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what I got. Let's see if we got any errors or typos or well, let's just see. We're awesome. You guys were able to uh, notice the tenses. Nishin.
Oh, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Oh, excellent observation there, Awapshka Mangan. Staha. So, wind motion, how you would correct that, Awapshka Mangan? What if the the way that it's written now with the answer? <laughs> uh -huh. Now I'm real hesitant to go to the next one. Oh, I was muted again. I'm going to wait to do the, when the fourth person is the actor. Um, it's going to change a little bit, as we saw briefly, and we had a lovely discussion about, thanks to uh, the help of Kevin. And... <laughs> lovely. Obviation. It'll be fun, they said. How? Uh, so that may have been a lot, Gainjida, but uh, <laughs> we'll just leave it at that right there. And uh, we'll just conclude our uh, our class. Nangwanaksha, I didn't even realize that uh, we were going to have a spirit feast uh, memorial for my uncle, Jesheba. I, I talked to him. I mean, well, I talked to him, yes. I talked about him a couple times, how he was the one who taught me about picking medicines and how important Anishinaabemo is, especially in our uh, in our communications with the, the medicines. Uh, he passed away one, one year ago today. And uh, so we're just uh, about to serve him some fish pie and yeah we're going to invite him over to eat and if it's all right with all of you uh, we'll just say bomb off peak and him for now and i'll see you next week oh and check out tuesday's class too how miigwech uh gabajayik can away where when eh take care bye <laughs>